Welcome to another episode of On This Day on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I'm your host for On This Day, Mike Goodpasser. Today we're going to talk about December the 9th, 1934, the infamous Sneakers game as the Giants beat the Chicago Bears 30-13 to to win the NFL championship. Now there was a crowd of over 35,000 that burst through the Polo Grounds police barriers, engulfed the frozen field, and carried off splintered goalposts as the bruised heroes of the New York Giants football team won the NFL Championship in 1934. The Giants themselves provoked this riotous demonstration when they came behind in a heart-surging, heart-thumping drive to score four touchdowns in the last period and to beat the, up until that point, undefeated Chicago Bears 30-13. to Now, if you're listening out there, Don Shula and the Miami Dolphins, this was before you guys even did it, so you don't have to pop the champagne. And thereby, they won the professional football championship. Um, Guys like Ken Strong, Ed Danowitzki, and Ike Frankian were the New York players strikingly responsible for this smashing upset. But these scoring athletes got plenty of cooperation from their teammates, and the Giants played like inspired men to turn what seemed like certain defeat into a glorious victory. Strong made two touchdowns, Danowski and Franken got one each. Danowski, who was the quarterback's rifling passes, were brilliantly executed. The Fordham Pole, uh, I didn't call him that. This is, I was reading about it. They called him the Fordham Pole back there, so please, we don't need any hate mail. But the Fordham Pole lugged that leather to town into tough spots, and Strong was a human battering ram who outshone the legendary Hall of Famer Bronco Nagurski when he ripped and repeatedly tore through the Bears' beefy line. Now, you could have named your own odds on best that the Giants would win as they trailed on the short end of a 13-3 score going into that final period. The Bears had given them a frightful hammering. They were bruised, weary from being bounced off a frozen turf by the big, powerful monsters of the midway. Now, Jack Manders had kicked two field goals and Nagurski had plunged across the goal line after a fluky pass by Keith Molesworth. Burley bare back put them in, that's hard to say, Burley bare back, put them in scoring position early in the second period. True, Strong had booted a handsome 38-yard placement kick in the first frame. But these three points were about as useful as an electric fan in Little America. Coach Steve Owen pulled a bit of strategy between halves that played an important part in the Giants' amazing comeback. Realizing that his charges couldn't get a fold, foothold for their cleated for their cleats on the rock-like playing field, he sent them back to battle, or back to battle wearing rubber-soled basketball shoes. I don't think I don't think Chuck Taylors were made yet, but you get the idea. The effect of this new footwear was magical, and the giant line held while the charging bears skidded futilely on the frozen terrain. Strong and Danowitzki acquired added speed, and they twisted and whirled like ballet dancers when they carried the ball. They began to outplay the Bears in the third period, and Dananowski's pegs, passes to Ryan Flaherty, Dale Burnett, and Strong took them deep into Chicago territory when they changed the goals. But an intercepted pass enabled Molesworth to punt to Strong, who ran to the Bear 30 to set the stage for the first of the Giants' tallies. Now, the stocky, swarthy Frankian legged it to the Bears' goal line, with Carl Brumbaugh covering the ex-St. Mary's player, Danowski, let fly with a 28-yard pass that Broombaugh intercepted, but his he and Frankian collided and slid backward across the goal line. The ball was cleverly taken from the Chicagoan by, a, by the canny Ike. Strongly con- Strong converted the point, and the Giants found themselves all of a sudden only three points behind. There was no stopping them after this. Strong kicked off, and the invaders couldn't break past their own 20. And Molesworth was obliged to boot the Ken on New York's 46. Strong banged, banged the bear forward wall for 13 yards. Then he broke off left tackle, shook himself loose, and sped through the secondary as a safety man for 41 yards and a touchdown. That put the Giants in the lead for the first time in the game. Strong kicked the extra point, And a few minutes later, the New Yorkers were threatening once again on the Chicago goal line. The orange-shirted Bears were plenty downhearted when the smashed, crashing Nagurski, who had always been good for a few yards at a pinch, was stopped in his tracks. They said to themselves, shucks, if the Brock can't make the grade, we're sunk. And they were. The Bears were sunk this day. 
The Bears were just past midfield when he lost the ball on downs. Strong punched holes in the Bears' line, ripping off two first downs on power plays. He had worked his way to Chicago 29 when the rawbone Danowski galloped widely around right end to the 12. Strong took over again and cut off the, la- off the tackle for the third Giants touchdown. Now, the extra point was missed when the holder bobbled the goal try. But soon after the kickoff, Melinda intercepted a pass and lateral to Burnett. As he was being forced out of bounds, Dale was dropped on the Bear 21. Danowski drove through center for 11 yards and encircled his right flank, cutting back and across the goal stripe for the final giant, giant tally. Melinda converted this time. A few minutes later, Danowski dragged down another Bear pass, raced from midfield to the Bears 10, and again lateral to Burnett. The Giants were hammering away at the bear line when the final whistle blew. The statistics showed that the Giants had made 12 first downs and the Bears 10 for the entire game. So it was not an offensive slugfest. But that fourth quarter, this is why the 1934 championship game is called the sneakers game. It was that one change from going from cleats to sneakers. Because remember back then, there's no field turf, there's no artificial turf. So when you're playing and it's frozen, the pulling grounds is frozen, there's nothing those cleats are going to do except slide you across there. You got a much better grip with the tennis shoes. And that is what led the Chicago Bears to a 30, or it's what led the Giants to a 30 to 13 victory over the Chicago Bears in the NFL Championship on this day, December the 9th, 1934. Make sure you check back with us about 10 o'clock every morning on thegruelingtruth.com for our On This Days. We will be back tomorrow, but for now, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.